morning church, thanks for coming early today. Uh, even before the service starts, why not we rise on our feet and let's uh, commit today's service into God's hands. Uh, if, you have, if you have the gift of tongues, let's uh, pray in the spirit. If not, let's pray in understanding. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, I thank you, God, for this morning that we can just gather in your name in this place, oh God. Lord, we declare that this place is your sanctuary, oh God, and just pray, Lord, that, Lord, you fill this room with your presence, oh God. Pray, Lord, that anyone that comes into this place, oh God, be able to feel your tangible presence, oh God. I just pray, Lord, that, Lord, um, no matter how our week has been, oh God, whether it's a good or bad week, oh God, Lord, we surrender it to you, oh God. Pray, Lord, you take over all our situations, all our struggles, all our worries, oh God. And Lord, help us, oh God, to just focus on you this morning and nothing else. God, I pray, Lord, uh, for today's uh, word as well, God. Just pray, Lord, as Pastor Dave is preaching, God, just pray, Lord, you make our hearts good ground to receive your word, oh God. Just pray, Lord, it will not just be like a passing wind, oh God, but Lord, we'll, we'll be able to apply in our daily lives as well, God. God, I also pray, Lord, for the different ones that are serving today, God, from the worship team uh, to ex-hospitality team, ex-hosting team, and uh, ex-sound as well, God. I just pray, Lord, as we serve unto your name, oh God, I just pray, Lord, help us, to, help us to serve with clean hands and a pure heart, oh God. Lord, we want to commit this service in your hands. Pray, Lord, you take over, God. We do not want to do this if you're not here, God. So, Lord, we want to invite your presence to dwell with us today, God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. In Acts, we are part of a global network of churches that's, that, uh, that spans across different continents. We have churches in Europe, in uh, Asia, and so on. So let's, uh, with the list of church plants flashed behind me, let's pick a church plant and let's pray for the church plant. Let's pray that, uh, you know, God's uh, work will be able to be effectively administered through these church plants as well. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, I thank you, God, for the different church plants that you have entrusted upon us. More than that, I pray, I thank you, God, for just entrusting your vision unto us, O oh God. Lord, I just pray, Lord, that, Lord, you continue to um, guide the leaders in uh, this church plant, O oh God. Help them, O oh God, to just lead um, the entire church as one unit, O oh God, to pursue uh, your vision, to pursue your kingdom together, O oh God. I just pray, Lord, also for the the communities surrounding this church plants to be uh, to be ready, oh God, to just receive your blessing, to receive your, uh, your your outpouring of love towards them, oh God. I just pray, Lord, that Lord, you help uh, each and every church plant, oh God, to reach out, oh God, to every corner of society that surround uh, the surrounding them, oh God. Lord, we commit uh, each and every one of these church plants in mighty hands. Just pray, Lord, that there will be unity and Lord, uh, that that that. Uh, that your love, oh God, can be effectively administered through this church plant as well, God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Right now, I'll pass the time to the worship team. Morning, church. I hope you guys are excited to worship God today because I know we are. So, even for some of us, we've just come up from a powerful weekend at Getaway, but let's not just stop at Getaway. Let's continue to worship God with our best because I know that God 
is going to do a new thing this morning. Amen? Hallelujah. On the count of three, let's give Him a shout of praise. One, two, three. Hallelujah.
freedom is in his name. Open the gates of heaven, lift up a shout of praise. There is a lion roaring, Jesus the King of glory. There is a King of glory, there is a God who saves, one who is strong and mighty. Freedom is in his name. Open the gates of heaven, lift up a shout of praise. There is the lion roaring, Jesus the King of glory. There is a lion roaring, Jesus the King of glory. Oh, hallelujah, oh, praise his name.
of refreshing and times of refreshing here in your presence no greater blessing than being here with you here in this moment Lord pour out your glory let your love overflow restore my soul your love overflow restore my soul spirit of god spirit of god how i love you lord i thank you for always being there you lavish me with your presence even when i don't deserve your love we don't deserve your love you walk beside me and teach me to follow your ways that are perfect where your goodness endures this life as an altar, no down in surrender. Come and feel this heart that longs for your embrace. Come and feel this heart that longs for your embrace. Spirit of God, how I love you. Lord, I thank you for always being. Come and hold me, how 
I need your touch again. Come and fill me. Come and heal me. Come and hold me. How I need your touch again. Come and fill me. Come and heal me. Come and hold me. How I need your touch again. Fill me, Lord. Come and fill me. Come and heal me. Come and hold me. How I need your touch again. Holy Spirit. Fragrance of heaven, pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out. A holy anointing, the power of your presence, pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out. Fresh wind, we need a fresh wind, the fragrance of heaven. Pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out, a holy anointing, the power of your presence, pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out, we need a fresh wind, we need 
need a fresh wind, the fragrance of heaven. Pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out, holy anointing, the holy anointing, the power of your presence. Pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out. One more time, fresh wind. Church, even in this attitude of worship, why not let's just turn to the person next to you and let's just pray for them right now, whatever that they may be going through. Let's just uh, pray for them and just cover them in prayer. Hallelujah.
church, if you're done praying, can I just invite all of you to stand as we just finish with one last song?
of the one who gave it all. So I'll send my soul, Lord, to you, surrender all I am is yours. Let's sing this one last time. Another shout of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Morning, church. My name is Justin, and I will be your chairperson today. On behalf of X Church, I'd like to welcome all of you to X this morning. Let's take a moment to welcome a very special group of people. If you are visiting us for the first or second time, you are our guest of honor. And for those of you tuning in online, um, you know, just drop a line in the chat below saying, you know, you're new or something so that we can welcome you as well. And um, yeah, but for the rest of us, if you call X Church your home church, uh, let's look around us and welcome our friends around us in the count of three. One, two, three. So good to see many new faces here. It is now time for tithes and offering. In Acts, we look forward to tithes and offering because we want to worship God by giving our best in every area of our lives. If you are new here and not comfortable with this, feel free to not give into the offering. So today, there are two ways to give into the offering. The first way is through the offering box on my left, so you can give in physically. And the second way is through bank transfer. If you do resort to this method though, uh, remember to reference T and O so that we can earmark your offering. Please allow me to lead you in a reading of scripture before we give. From Proverbs 3, 9 to 10, it says, Honour the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your buns be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, I thank you, God, for everything that you've given to us. From our lives, from our, uh, our jobs, our, you know, our studies, and everything that we have, oh God, truly comes from you, oh God. Lord, even as we give unto you uh, this morning, oh God, I pray, oh God, that Lord, you help us, oh God, to give because we want to bless you, God. Give because we want to say, oh God, to you that, Lord, we trust you more than we trust money. We want to trust you more than we trust our finances. We want to trust you more than we trust anything else. All we want is you this morning, God. So Lord, I pray, God, you help us, oh God, to give uh, into your house, oh God. And even as we give, oh God, I pray, Lord, use this uh, offering to bless your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, let's give cheerfully. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, if you are giving physically, feel free to come in front to give into the offering box. While you are giving into the offering, I have one announcement for you this uh, for this week. So we have prayer meeting this Tuesday. <laughs> prayer meeting is where we gather as small groups to pray for one another, the church as well as the community around us. So if you're interested, please speak to either me or one of the leaders so that we can point you towards a suitable uh, group. Um, that's all for announcements. And before we move on, uh, we want to take this time to celebrate birthdays. So I was wondering if anyone's celebrating their birthdays this coming week. Not for 
and also the one, I mean, if you guys are tuning in online, tell, tell, tell the world that it's your birthday so that, you know, we can make your day feel special as well. So, yeah, apart from Rora that's celebrating her birthday this Sunday, and since uh, this Tuesday, right? Tuesday. Anyone else? Birthdays this week. Free chocolates on us. No strings attached. Oh, actually, there is string attached physically. <laughs> okay, let's, let's sing the last line of Happy Birthday. Happy Birthday to you. Amen. Pray that it will be your best year yet. Amen. Right now, we want to take this time to pray uh, for our unsafe loved ones. You know, most of us here are believers, but there are many out there who have not come to know Christ. Well, it could be a friend, a colleague, or even a family member. But God sacrificed His Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for all of us so that we can have a direct relationship with Him. So let's do our part in spreading the good news, no matter who that person might be. Let's believe that God has the perfect plan and timing prepared ahead of them. Let's commit the salvation to Jesus and take this time uh, take the next minute or two to pray for our unsafe loved ones Amen Let's do this Dear Father in heaven, Lord, I thank you, God, for dying on the cross for us since 2,000 years ago. Lord, truly, we did not, do not deserve any of this, but Lord, you did it anyway because that's how much you loved us. God, thank you, God, for the direct relationship we have with you. Thank you, God, that, we, that no matter what we're going through, no matter what we're struggling with, no matter what's coming our way, we know that you are bigger than all things and that we can rely on you. Lord, we want the same for our friends and family who, who, has not, who have not come to know you, uh, who do not have that life of salvation, who do not have a life uh, filled with freedom and hope in you, God. Lord, we want the same for you. Lord, so we pray, God, that, Lord, you send the right people to, to, to them, oh God, so that uh, they can see you for who you truly are, oh God. We pray, oh God, that, Lord, in, in your perfect timing, in your perfect plan, they will come to know you. And Lord, even if one of them comes to know you, uh, you, you know, today, oh God, Lord, the whole heaven rejoices. So we want to declare that, uh, declare salvation also in this house. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Right now, can I just invite all of you to just uh, stand on your feet and put your hands together to welcome Pastor Dave today. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Please be seated. Uh, let's give a big hand to the worship team, shall we? For leading us so confidently and powerfully. Amen. Praise God. Yeah, praise God. Morning, everyone. Welcome to church. And, uh, you know, so good to see all of you guys here again. And uh, especially also our friends tuning in online. Uh, you know, uh, you know, Pastor Cat. Some of you maybe have not realized, uh, but Pastor Cat is uh, a little bit ill, uh, and she caught, I think, some version of the freshest flu. <laughs> uh, so she, yeah, she's forever student. So she was always catching the freshest flu, uh, and uh, so she's. Resting at home and uh, joining us worshiping online, uh, and uh, maybe there are different ones uh, worshiping online with us today because they f 
feeling under the weather as well. Uh, so church, why don't we just very quickly just pray for people uh, tuning in online. And God, we just pray right now for people tuning in online. If there's anyone that is ill under the weather, uh, sick or in pain for whatever reason, right now we pray healing will reach them in the name of Jesus. That Lord, that you would touch them right now in the name of Jesus with your, with your love, with your grace, with your presence and with your healing, Lord. Uh, be with them. And, and God, we also want to pray for our congregation here uh, in person today. God, we pray that you continue to uh, protect us with your grace uh, away from any uh, flu or, or, or viruses, Lord. Uh, and uh, we continue to ask for your presence, Holy Spirit, uh, to be with us this morning. God, we're about to open up your word. Lord, we pray that your word will speak to us today. Let every word that we read jump out of the pages of the Bibles we're reading it from and straight into our hearts. Lord, today, we're not here for more information, but Lord, we desire transformation. Would you change us from the inside out so that we become more like you? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Uh, like I said, a big welcome uh, uh, back to church uh, because last weekend uh, we were away. Amen. Uh, and uh, how many of you were, were at a getaway with us? Amen. Amen. How many of you didn't get to go away? Don't worry. We're, we're not, you know, shame you or anything like that. We just want to say, we missed you. We missed you, really. Uh, but we're so glad that we can gather again here physically uh, again and uh, just to worship God. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, without, again, you know, just wanted to you know, let our friends who uh, couldn't get away with us uh, to know that we had really truly such a God time. Uh, and uh, it was really powerful. Uh, and uh, not only was, uh, you know, God there, uh, but, you know, everyone, I keep hearing, I keep hearing testimonies of, of different ones saying that, hey, pastor, I, I, I felt God challenge me in this area. I felt uh, touched by God in this area. I felt God heal me. I felt God convict me in this area. And, 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 Truly, only God can do it, you know, uh, uh, and uh, only God can move people's hearts uh, to want to just, you know, uh, change uh, for the better, to, 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 to honour God uh, in their lives. So, I'm saying all that because we would love to hear from you. So, if, if you have a testimony that you think... Uh, by sharing it will benefit the larger body of Christ. Uh, we want to hear from you. Please come, uh, talk to your home leaders, talk to myself, or when Pastor Kat comes back, talk to her. Uh, we want to collect some of these testimonies and uh, we, wanna, we want you to share it, amen, uh, so that it can be uh, remembered and it can be a blessing, amen. And all those who have a testimony say... Amen, amen. Wow, that's a lot. That's a, Praise God, praise God. So please, you know, uh, and you know it, it, granted, if it's not too personal, you know, because we, we want to we, we wanna celebrate what God has done uh, in your life uh, with you, uh, but at the same time, respect your privacy. Uh, but not only that, we also had uh, some people get water baptized, amen? Uh, so that's always amazing. Uh, and, uh, in, and, and not only that, it was uh, good food as well, amen? How many of you uh, uh, enjoyed the food? Come on, come raise your hands and, and shame the devil, amen? Praise God. Um, uh, and you know, it, it, it's good. It's really awesome, you know, to, to get away, uh, uh, you know, uh, once in a while. Uh, and uh, we know that when we get away, it, it's not just about the food. We know that it's not just about the games, even though the games team did a, a great job. Uh, you know, and lots of fun. It's, it's not just about, about all that. Of course, you know, getaway is not perfect. And uh, we, you know, continue to fast and pray for the shower situation. Uh, you know, let us pray that truly, truly, you know, um, that, that if we go back to that venue again, that the Holy Spirit will pour out. Amen. So everybody pray, Lord, we want an outpouring of the Holy Spirit both spiritually and physically, <laughs> let the showers be fixed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, but of course, you know, uh, uh, as I'm saying this, I'm, I'm not trying to alienate anyone. Uh, I'm just saying that, you know, it's, it's good and, and, and powerful uh, to get away and get into God sometimes, right? But what if I told you, friends, uh, that, that we don't have to limit it to just a, a once a year getaway, what if I told you that, that it doesn't have to be a weekend getaway? What if I told you it doesn't have to be an annual getaway? What if I told you, and, and, and no lie at all, that it is truly possible to have an everyday getaway? How many of you would say yes to that? 
How many of you, you know, will go like, wow, you know, if I can have that every day, I want to. And, and I'm not lying. Uh, this, is, this is the Word of God. And, and I want to show us today uh, how God can move mightily uh, every day in our lives. So if you're taking down notes, the title of my message today is called Everyday Getaway. Everyday Getaway. Like we say, you know, getaway is it's not about the food. We thank God for the food. It's not about the games. We thank God for the games. It's not just about living on, on, on sleeping in bunk beds with other random strangers. We thank God for being able to sleep on bunk beds with random strangers that we went into the room as strangers, but we came out as friends. Amen? Uh, and I like to believe that we went there as a church, but we came out as a stronger community, a family even. But truly, truly, it is about encountering God. It's about meeting with God and, 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 and just spending time with Him. The reason why getaways are, are so special, and it's not just like, it's not like the ex-church getaway is special. As, as much as I like to think that our getaway is extra special, and maybe, you know, personally, selfishly, I do think that sometimes. But we, we all encounter God, you know, in our lives, if you've been a Christian, whenever we got away. All of us, at one time or the other, had powerful encounters at, at your youth camp, at your teens camp, at your student camp, whatever, you know, you know camp you went to, family camp, church camp, you know. Uh, 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 don't, don't say fat camp, okay? Just whatever camp you went to, you know. And you encountered God because, tell you why, you got away. You got away. You honoured the Lord by getting away from your schedule, getting away from the noise, getting away from the distraction, and you got into God. Amen? You know, and the same with, with conferences that we've attended. You know, some of us here, we, we will even, I know of friends who will, will, you know, back when we could still travel, when there was no, you know, uh, travel restrictions, uh, I know friends who will uh, annually, you know, almost like a pilgrimage, uh, buy plane tickets to fly all the way to Australia, to fly all the way to America to attend conferences. And you come back and you go, I was so blessed, I was so refreshed. And, and again, the, 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 the anointing is not in Australia or in America. The anointing is not on the plane ride. You know, the anointing is in the getting away. Amen? And, and so, you know, it is when we get away and get into God that, that we, we become especially aware of God. And then God meets us in a special way. But I want you to know that, that as I was saying, that it is possible to get away every day. That it's not just my idea, but this is actually a lifestyle that Jesus lived out. Do you know that Jesus also went for getaways? You know, some of you are thinking like, is this, is this a trick? It's not a trick. Okay, let's, let's turn to some scriptures and then you know the, the exact type of getaway uh, we're talking about here. Mark chapter 1, verse 35. Mark 1, 35. Very early on in the Gospel of Mark. Mark 1, 35. Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight. Wow, how many of you are morning people? Amen. Any morning people here? Praise God, you're, you're in good company because Jesus was a morning person. Amen. Uh, right? So having risen a long while, I think he, in fact he's, in fact, can it be argued that Jesus was a night owl? Because technically a long while before daylight, it was still at night. Anyway, a long while before daylight, he went out. Everybody say, went out. And departed. Everybody say, departed. To a solitary place. And there he prayed. You see how? Every day, every day in the morning, God set time apart. And he got away. Amen. He went out of the place he was sleeping. He got away from, I don't know, you know, uh, uh, the disciples who were snoring. He went away, departed to a solitary place. He went away. Amen. I don't know which countryside. You no, know, there's no Dales Down Christian Center at that time, but, but Jesus went away. Amen. Maybe, you know, I don't know. Uh, and, and there he prayed. I'm about to say like a pun, like, you know, uh, Galilee Retreat Center or something like that, but it sounded a bit too lame, but, you know. Sounds like a dad joke. And anyway, so he went away to pray. All right. Let's turn to some extra scripture. Mark chapter 6, verse 46. Mark 6, 46. So this wasn't just a one-time thing. This wasn't just a once-a-year thing. He got away and he went away to pray. Right? And when he had sent them away, he departed to the mountain to pray. 
So this one, go back, read it, but the context is this. After feeding the 5,000, after multiplying the five loaves and two fish to feed the masses, Amen. How many of you after, if, if, if one day by the grace of God, you know, God leads us to say that I want you to, to book up, um, I don't know, Emirates Stadium. You know, I want you to, to book up O2, you know, Forum or O2, you know, Center here in London. And then 5,000 people came. Wow, praise God. And we ministered to all 5,000 people. We fed them physically and spiritually, we blessed them and then they, they left and, and there were still leftovers of testimonies and, and, and food and, 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 and all that, right? So this is exactly what Jesus did. How many of you after that would begin to high-five each other and then go like, hey, where to, where to eat for dinner? Right? Come on, be real. Right? You will go like, wow, what a day of ministry. Praise God. Now I need to not talk to anyone for the next five hours. You know what I'm saying? You know, all the introverts say, amen, right? <laughs> right? Because I know sometimes church, I, I feel you. You know, sometimes, you know, church for introverts can be a scary place. I'm here. I want to be part of community. I need to talk. But after a while, I can't do it anymore. You, know? <laughs> you just kind of find a corner and just stare at it. And some of us here, if we, we did that for 5,000 people, we would want to retreat. Right? We want to go away and have a good meal with some friends. You know, I, I know of someone in church who will immediately go like, all right, after this, Mama Don, you know. Uh, and, you know, for, for those watching online, just, you know, name your favorite eating spot, right? For, for Bristol, I know it's Brist Noodle. Uh, and uh, for, for, for Edinburgh, uh, Edinburgh's pretty, pretty adventurous. They, they go to different places, but, you know. Uh, and anyway, so, you know, we, we eat Thai Thai. Anyway, so, uh, sorry, I just remember... <laughs> It's like a Thai place in Edinburgh, Thai Thai. Uh, I know Dr. Rachel's favorite, one of her favorite places. We would go, but where did Jesus go? Jesus got away. Jesus didn't, didn't, uh, you know, didn't post on Instagram, wow, look at my crowd. No, no. He dismissed them and he went away. To sleep? No. Went away to, to scroll on the gram? No. Went away to, to what? Went away. You know, let's flash it up again. To the mountain to pray. How many of you after that will go like, all right, God, if I want to pray, let me just go back to my room to pray. Let me go back to the valley to pray because I don't need to climb. <laughs> I can just walk. Let me go to someplace flat to pray, you know? But Jesus went to the mountain to pray. He got away every day before ministry started in the early morning and even after ministry, He got away. Let's, let's, let's move on. Luke chapter 5, verse 16. Luke 5, 16 says this. So he himself, often, underline often, turn to your neighbor and says often, withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. So again, this wasn't just a, a once a year annual getaway. This wasn't a, a weekly getaway. This was a daily and an often thing. Often here implies that it's maybe more than once a day. Wow. You know? And when Jesus, it was his culture. It was his habit to daily get away from the noise, get away from the distraction, maybe even get away sometimes from the achievements to pray. Amen? This is the Lord we serve. You see, sometimes we, we as Christians, we... We, we talk a lot about, oh, I want to read God's Word every day, and, and sometimes we can, we can over-champion that. Uh, but, but we forget that Jesus had a very fervent prayer life. You know, and, and, and a lot of us here, I feel the Holy Spirit tell us that, that if, if we only see importance uh, in, in reading the Word, if we only see importance in worship, if you only see importance in, in gathering for, for church and homes, uh, it, it, it's like someone with, with both arms, healthy, you know, strong arms, and only using one arm. Does that make sense? You know, how many of you have tried to lift heavy things with one arm, right? Some of you, you can do it. But eventually, you will meet something that your one arm cannot do. And, and let's just admit it, it's silly, right? Can you imagine if, if God has blessed me with two arms and I'm only using one, you know? And Jesus used both. We forget that Jesus had a very active prayer life. And I feel that sometimes this is the part of Jesus that, 
that we, we don't uh, emulate enough. We say we want to be like Jesus. We, we want to love like Him. We want to, you know, we sing songs, you know, we want to love like Jesus. We want to see the world like Jesus. What about I want to pray like Jesus? And Jesus got away daily to pray, to seek the Father. Jesus Himself, let's not forget, he's, he's, when He was on earth, He was fully God, fully man. So as He was doing this, do you think He was just doing it for Himself? Or do you think He was doing it to role model for His disciples? He, he, the fact that it was written down in the Gospels meant that His disciples, His closest followers, saw it and remembered it, that it was His habit. You know, Jesus, being God, He is self-sustaining. But He's doing it to tell us that I might be self-sustaining. But even then, I, you know, how many know that sometimes we, we don't go to God just to get something? And, and how many know that Jesus didn't, know, didn't need to go to the Father to get something? Jesus had all He need, but He wanted to be in the Father's presence. You see, when we get away for a camp, for a conference, or for the weekend getaway that we just came back from, it was about escaping the noise of, of our, our daily lives from our schedules, from everything that, that distracts us, that depresses us, and to get away from all that and get into God's presence. Of course, with the company of some good friends and good food, but it's still God's presence. Amen? And so, so that's what I believe that the Holy Spirit wants us, the Holy Spirit wants us to know that all that we've experienced in the last weekend, we are to continue every day. And, and the Holy Spirit's encouragement for those who, who, for whatever reason, couldn't come away with us is that you don't need to miss out too. You don't need uh, to wait until the next time a church or any organization holds a conference or a camp for you to encounter God. You can have it every day. Amen? So it's established fact that Jesus had a strong, fervent, robust prayer life that we need to emulate. You know, so I encourage you, you know, from today onwards, you know, and, and endeavor to get away. You know, maybe for some of us here, you're thinking, but you know, I don't have a place to get away from. You know, I'm just a student staying in halls. Maybe, maybe your getaway is to, is to switch off your phone. Maybe your getaway is to wake up in the morning and do the opposite. Instead of turn on your phone, to get up in the morning and turn off your phone so that you can spend time praying with God. Maybe some of you are thinking, but where I stay is a bit too noisy. Uh, maybe you just got to ask God, maybe, Lord, help me. You know, maybe you just need to get up and like Jesus, get out. Maybe go to the, 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 the school library, the campus library a little bit earlier. Go to work a little bit earlier. Not to check your emails. <laughs> not, to, not to get coffee, you know. <laughs> not to sit at the pantry and daydream, uh, but to maybe get to your desk. And do, do, can you can imagine the power. Wow, some of us were thinking, God, I want to impact my marketplace. This job that you've blessed me with, I believe that it's not just for my own, you know. I, I, want, I, I believe I want to do something, may, maybe for, for some of us here, it's about getting in early. Maybe getting in early is your getaway. <laughs> and getting in early to pray, you know, to pray for your work, to pray and seek the Lord. And invite God's presence into your marketplace. Some of you may be thinking, but Pastor, you know, haven't you realized, you know, we don't go into the offices now anymore. We work from home. Or whatever it is. You know, go out for a jog. Maybe some of you is this. Go out for a jog. Get away, go out for a walk. You know, get out of your house and get away from work. And get away from everything else that distracts you. And just to pray. Amen? Pray even, friends, before you start reading God's Word. Some of you, you know, go like, I, I've tried reading the Bible, but I don't understand. That's because you never asked for God's help. You're trying to hack at it with your own understanding. And, and you'll hit a roadblock. But, but go and pray. Amen? Praise God. And so, like I said, I, 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 I need to keep the time. So, one more scripture reference, Matthew chapter 26, verse 36 to 46. Matthew 26, 36 to 46. So, we know that Jesus, you know, he, he, he prayed every day. He got away every day to pray. He got away often to pray. Uh, before great things and after great things, he prayed. How many know that even before the cross, he prayed? And, 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 and this is where I want us to focus 
uh, and, and, and you know, get some truth out uh, about prayer this morning. So Matthew chapter 26, verse 36 to 46, if you're there, can I hear a good amen? Amen. Praise God. Let's read together. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to the disciples, sit here while I go and pray over there. You see, even, even, how many know that Jesus was busy? How many know that, no, if, you know, <laughs> let's be honest here. If, 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 if God told you to go to the cross, how would you spend your last minutes calling your loved ones, you know? And, but Jesus Maybe he did call upon his loved one. He called on his father. And that's why he even went away to pray. Do you see how consistent Jesus is? We need to be like that, friends. If you desire all that you encountered, don't just let every encounter with God, whether it's at last weekend or at your youth camps, or don't just let that be a memory, friends. Don't be a Christian that runs from conferences to conferences. Don't be a Christian that runs from camp to camp, from weekend away to weekend away. No, no, go to God every day. And, and Jesus went, he says that he brought all his disciples and even then there was like, all right, you stay here. We're going to go away there to pray. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death. Stay here and watch with me. He went a little further and fell on his face and prayed. So you see, Jesus went away, and he went away. Even in this, you know, core team of, of those, of those three, Peter and the sons of Zebedee, he even went like, all right, you stay here. I, I still need to get away and pray. Amen? And so Jesus here is reminding us the importance of getting away. He fell on his face and prayed, saying, oh my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, a second time he went away and prayed. Second time he went away and prayed on the same night itself. Oh my father, if this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink it, your will be done. Of course, Jesus here wasn't just talking about any cup. He wasn't talking about any random drink. He was talking about the cross. He was talking about the, the wrath of God that was supposed to be poured out on mankind. Jesus said, said that, I, I will take this upon me. And, and, and he was struggling uh, uh, with, with the very idea of it. We'll go into what he was struggling, right? And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. Wow, how many of you eyes are heavy right now? Amen? So he left them, went away again. And prayed the third time, sit away from the sun so your eyes are not so heavy. Saying the same words. Then he came out. So a third time he went away to pray. How many times he went away to pray? Then he came to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Let's unpack this for a bit. So hopefully by now you understand that you know, you need to get a way to pray daily. I want to encourage you, Father, by, by giving you at least three reasons uh, why we need to get a way to pray more than, more than we realize. All right? And, and, and if you can understand these three truths that Jesus role modeled out, I believe that there will be a new breakthrough in your prayer life. Amen? You'll be able to go and, and, and know God deeper, experiencing Him more intimately. So, I got three points for us today, uh, focusing from the scripture that we just read. So, my three points is this, all right? I want, to try, I want to tell you three things prayer is about, okay? Point number one, prayer is about getting real. Getting real. Jesus didn't just, how many of you here, I mean, just before we talk about Jesus, uh, you struggle to pray in public because you're afraid. You're afraid of your real voice. You're afraid of your real accent. You're afraid of your real broken English. You're afraid of, of your real limited knowledge of who God is. You're afraid to be real. Come on, be honest now. Right? You know, I, 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 I used to struggle with this as well. Every time, you know, we pray publicly 
And sometimes, you know, we, we think that because, you know, publicly prayer is so, so scary, uh, we, we just get frightened of the idea of prayer altogether. And, and, and I've been in enough prayer meetings and prayer groups to hear people change their accents when they pray. You know, I'm not here to shame anyone. If that, if, if that is you right now, I pray that uh, over this, God will help you to get real. Because how, let me tell you this, God loves your voice. God loves your voice. You're going to the author of, thru, of truth. You don't have to put on a mask. You don't have to put on a fake accent, right? And how many know that God understands every language? You know, some of us here, it's not that, you know, let me, let me just not put anyone down. It's not that we speak broken English. It's that we speak too many languages. Amen? And so, our English is broken because the other languages want to come in. And, and, and in trying to, to express ourselves, sometimes a, a, a part of our brain goes like, no, this, this, this emotion, this feeling is better expressed in, in Cantonese, in Chinese, in Malay, in Japanese, in, 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 in Tagalog, and, you know, in, 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 you know, broken English even, right? Sometimes you just, you know, just, just, you know, just English itself cannot cut it. And friends, I'm here to tell you, it's okay. God understands. God understands broken English. God understands Malaysian English, the most broken of all English. Then God understands. I'm Malaysian, so I can say that. You know, it's okay, it's okay. Right? God understands. So when you pray, you don't have to worry about man. I got to man. I got to put on. I got to get into. You know, I got to sound like Rora. You know, I gotta. I gotta. I gotta put on an accent. You know, I gotta sound like Dr. Hannah. I gotta put on an American accent. I, you know, not 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 to say they put on accents. I'm just saying. You know, that, that you feel right. That, that, that when you pray. Friends, come on, get real. Yeah. Get real with God. Yeah. Jesus was so real that, that, that it was recorded there that he, he, he was, you know, there was sadness, there was so deep sorrow. Amen. Jesus wasn't afraid to put up pretenses. Jesus wasn't going to the Father and, and speaking in, in the most um, uh, composed way. How many know that you can get real? You don't need to be fully composed. Your language doesn't have to be, to be perfect. You don't have to put on an accent. You don't have to have perfect vocabulary. You know, you, you, you can be real. You can bring your real emotions to God. What was Jesus saying? You know, was he putting up a front and going like, Oh, Heavenly Father, hallowed be your name. For it is in your name that is above every name. For I know your name. For before the world began... There was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God, and I happened to be that Word. <laughs> so, Father, I understand you really well, but this cup, oh, this cup, if it is truly impossible to be possible, let it... You don't have to, friends. <laughs> you don't have to! Sorry, that was, I just butchered the whole English you know, accent. I, I apologize for all our native English speakers. Oh, and I've seen, come on, as I'm saying this, and I've seen pastors. Oh, man, I've seen, you know, I, I love my fellow pastors, but I've seen pastors in Malaysia when they put on the mic and go like, all right, you know, inter-church event, we're going to invite pastors so and so to open up in a word of prayer. And then this person comes up on stage and suddenly, you know, he turns into some American cowboy and go like, oh, hallelujah, heavenly father. We pray for your presence. Oh, I feel the Holy Spirit's presence here right now. Hallelujah. Your presence will fill this place. And then, you know, in Jesus' most holy name, amen. Uh, who do I pass this mic to? You know, like, I've seen it. Friends, I'm just being real here that we can get real with God. I hope the people online are not like, <laughs> like, what is happening? We're just having fun. This is church. Amen. Now, we don't have to worry about that. Jesus went with his real, raw emotions. Friends, you can go to God with a real, raw emotions. Maybe somewhere along the line, you were told that, you know, you can't go to God like that. Because, you know, don't get me wrong. God is, God is high and mighty, but he's not stuffy. Oh, that's so good. You got to write it down. God's high and mighty, but he's not stuffy. He doesn't look down at the way you speak. You can come to Him as you are. You know? You can come to Him as you are. Especially, friends. Especially when, when you're going to Him. Does God not know what we're going through? He knows. Amen? 
You know, as I'm saying this, you know, again, I'm not putting anyone down. Maybe, maybe along the way, due to whatever reasons, uh, you, you, you felt like, and, and maybe you've used it as a crutch. Maybe I shouldn't say fake or phony. Maybe sometimes, you know, public speaking is scary. And, and we're using maybe a certain way of speaking as a, as, a, as a crutch, as a way to help us be more confident, right? And, and on that, there's nothing wrong with that. But I also want you to know, that God is our healer. And, and when we go before Him, we don't need to be on a crutch. We can be real and say that, you know, a crutch helps the broken to walk. But when you go to the God who heals, you can go broken. And you can go and go like, this is me. God, you know, this is what I'm, what I'm wrestling with. And Jesus was wrestling. He got so real with God that He wrestled. Jesus fell on His face and voiced His struggle. Friends, how many know that just because you know what you ought to do, doesn't mean you don't struggle with it. Jesus struggled with doing the right thing. You know, did he hate mankind? Was he afraid of death? No, but he struggled. Because we, we truly don't know, you know, the full extent of what Jesus had to go through. If I were to tell you right now that, hey, you know, uh, 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 Justin, you know, from today onwards, um, you know, you will not, you'll be cut off from the internet for the rest of your life. You know? You know, God will certainly put a special anointing over your life and everyone else will have internet except you. You will have a bubble of no connectivity. Man, how many know that, not say Justin, all of us will struggle. All of us will struggle. How huh, immediately? Oh no, all my files, all my emails, you know, everything. And, and that's just the internet. Jesus, in going to the cross, was because of sin, was gonna, he was going to be willingly cut off from the Father. So we don't know how, he, how much that was a struggle to him. Just because you love doesn't mean you don't struggle. Amen. Some of you, you love God, but you struggle. I want you to know that you're in good company. Jesus loved, but he also struggled. But he went to God. How many times? Once, twice, again, and again, and again. Struggles are real. How many know that you can get real with God? No, God wants us to break through. God, and, and it is in the going to God in the secret place, in the getting away and being real, can our real issues be addressed? Amen? And so prayer is about getting real. Getting real with God. Amen? Whether public prayer, and, and, and public prayer should be an extension of your private prayer. Amen? It shouldn't just be like, oh, publicly I pray like this and, and privately I don't pray at all. Don't get me wrong, prayer meetings, do we encourage people to go for prayer meetings? Of course. But, but prayer meetings shouldn't be your prayer life. Otherwise, you would just pray, you know, twice a month. But God wants us to pray every day because there's power. And how many know that we are the first ones who will benefit from getting real? Amen. How many know that it's very liberating when, you, when you're real? Right? The problem is this, we get real with the wrong people. Instead of getting real with God, we get real with people who are not God, who will misunderstand and judge our real vulnerabilities and will give the wrong input into our real issues. But God is saying that, come to me and get real. Amen? Point number two, prayer is about getting recharged. Jesus, as we known earlier, started the day by getting away. After miracles, He got away. Even before the cross, he went away. And he went away because when you're in God's presence, oh, that's where you really get recharged. That's where you really get... Power. How many of you, you, you came back from the getaway recharged? Amen? You, you, it's not like the problems disappeared. The problems are still there. But suddenly now, you feel like you've got the strength to face those problems again. Suddenly now, it feels like you, you got you know, a, a second wind. You feel like there's, there's fire in your bones again. You know, and you can see Jesus started at the Garden of Gethsemane by falling on His face and He ended by commanding the disciples to rise. And you can see the transformation that Jesus went through. He went there with His real vulnerabilities and in the going to the Father three times, He went. I know that we can go to God again and again and again. If Jesus one night itself went away to the Father 
three times do you think your one prayer is enough? And sometimes we, we, we think that, oh, I prayed about it. You know, Jesus often. You know, we, we need God's power more than we realize. Truly, friends, as I'm saying this because the things that you struggle with, they're really tough. They're really tough. You know, all of us here, we, we have different giants to slay every week. Some of those giants are called our bosses. I mean, metaphorically speaking. And also, please do not slay your bosses. But you know what I'm saying. You got to stand up to some giants in your life. Call your boss. Call your class. Call your anxiety. Call your depression. Right? Call whatever your fear. You know, it, it, it's tough. It's tough. I have great respect for all of you. You know, our friends who, who serve on a weekend or bake on a weekend, you know, and, 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 and on Monday, they have to face bosses. They have to face emails. You have to face going to work. You have to face performance reviews. And those things, let's be honest now, they drain you. They drain you. And, and if you think that with all that draining, that you only recharge once a week in church. In, in fact, don't get me wrong, even on this Sunday, this is a, this is a way of getting away. Because you got away from your beds. Tell your neighbor says, I'm so proud of you from getting away from your bed this morning. You know? Yeah. Right? We got away. We got away from our bed. We got away from all these other things that, that, that people do on a Sunday morning. You, your, your Sunday, that's why we start every time, thank you for spending your Sundays with us because we know that it's a sacrifice. But it's a sacrifice unto the Lord. And that's why after church, you walk away refreshed. You walk away recharged. But how many know that you need to plug yourself in every day? You know, we don't live as much as we like to, you know, reminiscence about the days where we used to have a Nokia phone. Some of you are not even born yet. But those of you who are older, you understand when we used to have the mobile technology and Nokia at the time. Now today, it's like, no, what? Uh, and, and back then, they were, the, they were the apple of their day. And their phones, hallelujah, only needed to be charged, I don't know, once every few days. And you could play cool games like Snake. <laughs> right? Forget, you know, Instagram. Snake was it, right? It's high score, whatever. And, and, and yeah, I mean, those days are gone, friends. The days of, of recharging, you know, some of you here today, you, you don't just charge your phone once a day, you have a power bank. And so, friends, if your phone needed to be recharged often, you are much more precious than your phone. Treat your soul with more care than your phone. I'm going to say it one more time. Treat your soul, your spiritual walk with Jesus, with more care than your phone. Don't just plug in every few days. Don't just plug in once a week. You're missing out if you do that. You're missing out. And God created you to do the 100%, but you're running on 20%. And it's painful to run at 20%. And the good news is this, God doesn't want you to run on 20%. There are a lot of things to do, Right? And, and God has given us the ability to face them. But as we face them, that power drains. If Jesus had to go away to pray often, you know, do you think he really needed the recharge? You know, maybe emotionally, maybe he was an introvert. Amen. I know all the introverts are like, wow, Jesus is an introvert? But, but Jesus wasn't afraid of crowds or so. But well, he's an extrovert? Jesus is all things to all men. And... <laughs> But the most important thing, thing is this, Jesus role modeled out. And so if Jesus went away often, let's go away often as well. Amen? Get recharged. Get fueled with the Holy Spirit. Point number three is this. Prayer is about getting realigned. Realigned. You know, when I used to own a car years ago in Malaysia, and one of the things that we sent the car in for, for servicing is, you know, alignment. And they want to check whether your tires are straight. Because you could be driving, and, and many times I've sent in, and the first time I, when I own a car, you know, the car is very precious. And then you, you, you send in your car for servicing often, uh, and then the people will come in with a hefty bill, and you get very suspicious, like, are you trying to cheat me? And they go like, no, 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 this is for your tire alignment. They are off. And you go like, no, it's fine. I can still drive. 
And the person said, yeah, yeah, you can still drive, but do you realize that, that, that you have to put, you know, that when the steering wheel is not straight, if your car alignment is straight, you know, your steering wheel should be straight, but your steering wheel is at a bit, always at a little bit of two o'clock, three o'clock, and you've just been adjusting with your own strength. And I got nothing to say. And they like quickly Google like, is alignment true? <laughs> Call a friend who knows about cars. Like this guy's trying to tell me that my tires need to be aligned. And then, and then my friend says, yeah, one of the most important things, tire pressure and alignment. That's, tire pressure is another message for another day. But alignment, <laughs> we get realigned because in life, we think we're doing okay. Jesus went to the Father. He knew what had to be done, but He went to the Father three times. Father, help me to be realigned to Your will. Not my will, but your will. Three times, Jesus. Not my will, but your will. Not my will, but your will. Jesus had to realign. Was, was Jesus off? No, he wasn't off. But he was just saying that, look, the struggle is real. The pain we go through is real. The temptation is real. And if we don't realize it, it's easy for us to go off the track that God wants us to go off. How many of you here, you, you desire God's will for your life? How do you know? A lot of people come, how do I know God's will? I just want to hear God. And say that, pray every day. You see, we, we, we think that, you know, God just give me this loud, booming voice. No, we said it in this church before. If you're expecting a five-year plan from God, you might have to wait longer because God doesn't give you a five-year plan. He gives you a five-yard plan. You walk the five yards, you drive the five yards, and then you realign, and then he tells you the next step, tells you the next step, tells you the next step. For some, it's frustrating because it feels like I gotta check in with God all the time. Yeah, but it's liberating because it means that you'll never be lost. You'll never go off track. If Jesus, Jesus role modeled out, he could have slept, you know, if he knew, oh man, tomorrow, who crucifixion day. I'm going to be hanging out a long time. So let me just maybe take a bit of a nap, you know. Uh, maybe I just put, you know, I, I'll be whipped on the back. I mean, put some moisturizer on. No, no, no. Jesus went to pray. And he role modeled out realignment with the Father, telling us that we need that realignment. How many of you, after going for any camp or conference, you, you feel like realigned? You feel like, oh, wow, I, I see God's plan for me clearer now. I'm more confident that this is the right track for me now. Or suddenly you realize that this is the wrong, that relationship's the wrong thing in my life. I need to change it. I need to get better. Right? So realignment. Your will be done, Jesus said three times. Amen. Are you going to God daily to ask Him, God, what is your will for me today? God, I got busy plans today. I got this meeting. I got that meeting. But how many of us would be like Jesus to say, but not my will, but yours be done. Not my busyness, but your business be done. Amen? And, and God wants us, friends. If we begin to do this, it's not that our prayer life will benefit, but truly, you know, we will, it it's truly will be like get away every day. Maybe minus the food and mi minus the games. And for some people, that's, that's not too bad as well. <laughs> you know? And he's saying that, I just want God. I want to hear his voice. And then that is, I just want to get real with God. Amen. And I encourage you guys to do this. And can I encourage you guys this one extra thing? That when you do pray, and maybe Jesus is telling us that the reason why we have to get away to pray is because maybe this extra read between the lines and you might get it or you miss it is that maybe Jesus expects us when we pray that we ought to pray out loud. A lot of us here, if prayer is about just, you know, closing our eyes and praying, that is a form of prayer, don't get me wrong. Why do you need to get away then? Doesn't closing your eyes be enough getting away? Do you think Jesus doesn't know he's got eyelids? What, what, what makes you think that, that, that the, the prayers of Jesus let this cup pass from me, but not my will, but yours be done. How, why do you think it's recorded? Could it be that in Peter's and the sons of Zebedee's sleepiness, they each took turns to catch a little bit? 
That means Jesus didn't just go away. He went away to pray, but he prayed verbally. Friends, there's power. This year's theme is prophesied. There's power in life and death is in the power of the tongue. There's, there's power when we say something verbally, when we say something out loud. It, it, it's like the difference between typing something on our computers and writing it out. When you write it out, when you sign it in person, ooh, there's a seriousness to it. There's a realness to it. I just remember the first time I signed my first, you know, loan I took to buy a house, I'd be like, oof, this is it, man. <laughs> Yikes. I remember when I got married and we had to be registered in our marriage. Man, Ken and I were standing there signing our lives, not away, but together. <laughs> you know, away from family. We got away from family and to be joined. But there was like, ooh, this is it. Right? Because, you know, otherwise praying our heart is like that, that WhatsApp messaging. That we type, oh, sorry, typo, oh, sorry, I fell asleep, oh, sorry, didn't read, oh, delete. But God is saying, come on, get real. And it doesn't get more real than saying it out loud. Which is more real? Your parents telling you that I don't need to tell you I love you because I think about it every day. Because I have it in my heart every day. Come on, you would dump your boyfriend if he ever said that to you. If your boyfriend says that, you know, I don't have to say I love you. I just know it in my heart. That's enough. You'll be like, thank you, next. <laughs> right? And, 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 and so why do we not go to God with that same love? And God's inviting us, get away and get real. And it doesn't get more real than verbal prayer. And that's how we, out of that overflow, have the courage to pray publicly. Amen? If, if you want to have the courage to be used by God to pray for your friend for healing, let it start private. Amen? Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your word and Lord, your heart for us. God, you desire us to encounter you every day. God, you desire for us to have, Lord, uh, to know you and to know your voice to experience your power every day. You want us to live victorious lives every day. And so God, I pray, Lord, help us. Help us, Lord, to not just be followers of Jesus in name only, but Lord, help us to truly follow in your footsteps. Help us not just to love like you. Lord, help us to also pray like you. Because God, you pray so very often. God, help us not just to think that reading your word is important, but it's, it's praying. And it's in the praying and communing with you that we understand the words that we read. Because we have met with the author, and so we know the author's words, we know his meaning. And so God, today I pray right now for my precious friends here who maybe struggle with their prayer life. God, I pray right now that you'll reassure them there's nothing to be afraid. There's nothing to be afraid that we don't have to come, you know, uh, feeling like we have to put up a front. We don't have to be perfect to go to you. We don't have to be smooth talking to go to you. Lord, you understand every starter. You understand, Lord, multiple languages. But God, help us to go to you. Help us not to live by an excuse. But Lord, help us to go to you daily and often. And when we go to you, help us to get real. And in that realness, Lord, we ask that you will recharge our souls. Lord, I pray, Lord, for my precious brothers and sisters here that are going through different struggles in their lives. The struggle is real, but so are you, God. And so God, while the struggle is real, I know your refreshing is real. I know your power is real. I know your promises are real. I know your presence is real. I know your healing is real. I know that you are real. And so God, I pray that as we get real with you, that the recharge of our souls will also get really real. And God, help us, Lord, to realign because we admit that we are so weak. And with our best intentions, 
sometimes and our fear of pain, we can delay doing the right thing. We can procrastinate honouring you. We can justify why it's not convenient this time, this week, this Sunday. But Lord, help us Lord. We do not want to miss the mark. And so God, help us to realign ourselves to you daily in our prayer life, Lord. Lord, help us, Lord, to desire to do your will on a daily basis. Because God, we know that there's encouragement to give out. There's life to be spoken out. There's prayer to be offered. There's kindness to be shared. There's generosity that needs to be expressed. There are hands that need to be stretched out for healing. But God, we also admit that there are times where we are too afraid. While we know the right thing to do, we struggle because we're afraid how it will look on us. We will struggle to know that if you really work by God, this is where your realignment is so important. So God, I speak and I pray this even for myself, God. We want to be a church that does your will. We want to be a people that does your will. Help us to be your people today, Lord who will not only pray, but we will be people that will listen and obey. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's just worship God for a bit. Let's all stand and let's worship God. Amen. And ask Him to fill you with new hearts. Amen. Maybe some of you here, you're asking God, God, help me to wake up earlier. Help me to be more disciplined when I go to sleep or help me to depend on you daily. You know, whatever it is that God is challenging you right now, come on. Let's begin to surrender to Him in worship. Thank you, Lord. I bow to my knees, say that I need you, fall at your feet. I just want more of you. Lord, I want more of you. Lord, I bow to my knees. To say that I need you, fall at your feet. I just want more of you. I just want more of you. Lord, I bow to my knees. To say that I need. give us a new heart that longs to honour you. Lord, help us, Lord. Lord, not to stay in our comfort zones, but to step out. Lord, there's so much that you want to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us when we've been going at it with our own strength and as a result, we become too weak. But Lord, help us, Lord, to make a daily habit, just like how you role model out a daily habit of recharging, realigning, and getting real. So Lord, I pray that you help us, Lord, 
if we have to struggle and wrestle with the things of God, help us to struggle and wrestle it with you so that, Lord, there will not be a struggle and wrestle in the other parts of our life and the rest of our days. So God, again, Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we close today, I just want to tell you, friends, maybe some of you here, you don't know Jesus, but I want you to know that one of the, one of the beautiful things about prayer is that this is an act that God welcomes both those that know Him and don't know Him to have the same access to. And today, I want to give you this opportunity to cry out to God, to get real with God, and to say, God, I don't just need a recharge. I need to be reborn. I need to be remade in your image. I need to repent. I need to return to you. So friends, God loves you and He's waiting for you. So friends, it's time to get real. And the most powerful prayer you can ever pray to God is God, help me. And I wonder if there's anyone here today every head bow, every eyes closed, you don't know Jesus personally. You've been coming to church and you tell yourself that I've still got questions but the truth is, the truth is, the real thing is this. You have all the evidence you need. Because if we were to purely go by questions being answered, you know, it's like excuses. We'll never run out of it. And maybe for some of us here, saying that I've got more questions, I need, I need more time, if you're really real, that's just an excuse. Because you really have experienced God. You really have experienced it. Whether in your person or through the person that you know of, that only, there must be a God for me to be surrounded by people as kind and sincere as this. There must be a God because every time I walk into this place, I sense a peace, I sense a love, I sense a healing that I cannot get anywhere else. There's, a, there's an irresistible force that keeps drawing me back in even when I don't feel like, but when I do make it, I don't regret it. That is the Holy Spirit knocking at the door of your heart saying, come on. Let me in. It's time to come home. So friends, let's get real. If that's you and today you'd like to admit that, yep, <laughs> I really need God. I really need Him. And you want to believe in Jesus. And says that Jesus, I want to believe in you. If everything I read and learned about you is true, then you must be God. And friends, He is. And we are to go to Him by faith. And every real relationship requires real commitment. And that's what Christianity is. It's not religion. It's not once a year, every other bank holiday. It's about walking daily with God, allowing Him to change us, allowing Him to use us to be His hands and His feet of healing and redemption in this broken world. It's not about perfect people. It's about imperfect people who are embraced by the perfect God who loves us and cheers us on every step of the way like a parent cheers the baby when he or she takes their few walking steps and God cheers as the Holy Spirit empowers us to live a new life here. A life of love, a life of obedience, a life of repentance. Friends, if that's you, and a count of three, I want you to boldly lift up your hands as a sign of surrender and say, that, yep, that's me, I need God. I need a real touch from the real God. If that's you, at a count of three, I want you to lift it up so I can see it. I'll pray with you and I want to celebrate with you. One, two, three. Is there anyone here today who would like to give his heart to Jesus? Is there anyone here today who would like to surrender? Is there anyone here? 
maybe you're watching online and you too can make a decision for Jesus today. All you have to do is, is say and declare this simple prayer. Why don't we do this together as a church? Amen. Would you pray after me? Say, Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus, thank you, thank you for, paying for paying the ultimate price, the ultimate price for, my sins for my sins by dying on the cross, by dying on the cross for, me. for me. I receive your love, I receive your love and forgiveness and, forgiveness and eternal life. By faith. by faith. Come into my heart, Come into my heart. And, life. and life and be my Lord and, be my Lord. and my, Savior. my Savior. Fill me, Fill me with, your Holy Spirit. with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Praise God. You know, whether you say that online or you say it here with your heart and you meant it, you know, we want to celebrate with you. God loves a homecoming. Uh, God loves a welcome party. And, uh, you know, please don't leave this place without us just passing you some materials that will help you walk, uh, uh, you know, more confidently uh, in your new life with Jesus. Amen. I'm going to pass the time back to Justin, who will wrap us up today. Thank you, Pastor Dave, for that powerful message. Before we close, can I just lead us in a closing prayer? Dear Father, we pray for your covering and care to come upon our entire church family. We pray for pastors, Kenneth and Sandra, all our elders, pastors and church plant coordinators, both here and abroad, as well as all our leaders who serve your house so faithfully week after week. Give us your daily peace and protection and provide all our needs according to your riches in glory, especially the wisdom to continue to be a church that's in line with your perfect will. Let your joy always be our strength, and let our lives always bring you glory. In Jesus' most precious name, we pray. Amen. Can I just also invite you to lift up your hands as I declare the benediction over you. Reading from uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 13 verse 14, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Church is officially over, but just a reminder that uh, the second service uh, after this. So feel free to invite your friends to come either today or the week after as well. There's refreshments prepared specially just for you. So hang around and uh, speak to someone new today. <laughs>